we are live. Hello, hello, hello. Remember, there's music. So, what would be a good poll question? Poll question. What are you thinking? What, what, think of a question that you really want to ask. I think we should stay on topic. And um, then what's a question on topic that you could be like a yes or no answer? How about... Is choice real? Or is choice a real thing? Or you should just change it to simply no, no. believe in destiny? Is that better? I can. I think that might be ordered a little bit. Okay, you like that? Yeah, I like that a little bit. Feel free to share on your main page. I'm just trying to get yeah. this chat. Yeah, we'll uh, see it pop up on my notification too. Yeah, that is the problem with uh, the live stuff. It's always that kind of issue. The live stuff. They're ashes. <coughs> yeah, so you go back to it's like to Got my it. main page yeah. and then uh, make sure that the bell has little little rung. Little rung on the belly bell. A little rung on the belly bell helps. Cool. Got it. Boom. Boom, boom. Up and running. What's up? I was looking at the poll question. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Decided Good that. evening, Facebook. How is everybody doing today? Welcome to Contextually Challenged. I am James, Girl Dad Gaming. We have Jay, Keith, and Chris with us. Ethereal.llc on Facebook and YouTube. Hopefully and everybody's Instagram. having a good time. This guy likes Check to talk out. over everybody. Jumping right in there, folks. <laughs> All right, well, I'll Step go ahead and it. let them continue on to the introductions from here. But I thank was you already guys rude so much enough. for coming and hanging out. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I apologize. I was rude enough. I'm going to let it continue on. But seriously, ethereal.llc, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Appreciate you guys. I'll let our guest introduce himself. All right. Keith Simmons here. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Fortunately, I don't have a lot of pages or anything to plug. <laughs> so, just... <laughs> awesome, awesome. And we got Coach Chris down on the end. Say what's yeah. up, brother. What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I actually want to start tonight. Uh, and, and let me make sure everything's, okay, everything's good. Music's off. We're good. I want to start tonight with uh, Chris's rant. I hope he's ready to rant. But, uh, it, you know, I, I think it's kind of important for him to, uh, to really get it off his chest early on. And uh, so that's what we're going to go with. How do you feel about that, Chris? <laughs> yeah, so... This week, uh, I got a little fireball. So, the uh, the riots uh, in D.C. or the protests, peaceful protests, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, recently, the uh, law enforcement officer that shot uh, the rioter slash protester, Ashley Babbitt, uh, had an interview, and he kind of expressed his thoughts about what happened. And um, it occurs to me a couple of things that were kind of frustrating. So this isn't the first law enforcement uh, shooting that we've seen in the news, right? But what's conspicuously absent here is talking about uh, the race of, of the person who was shot. Um, though in alternate scenarios, that's all you hear about. And the media tries to control these narratives. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But the fact is, with that shooting, I think it could well be argued that uh, the officer was justified in what he did. 
uh, because of a number of different things, like uh, the fact that, uh, as he stated in his uh, in his interview, that there were shots fired reported uh, over the radio and officers down. Now, apparently that wound up not being, well, not that the report was untrue, but obviously no officers were shot. That was just a report on the radio. So he hears that, and then there's this woman uh, breaking through this barricaded door, uh, accompanied by a bunch of people uh, behind her, and he ends up shooting her, of course, after drawing his gun and warning her away. So there's a lot of legal elements in there that, you know, we can get into. Uh, but the fact is, is I think he was justified, even if ultimately he was wrong in the decision. You know, she was unarmed, of course, but none of that stuff matters. You hear that a lot in the, in the media. Oh, they were unarmed. They were unarmed. Well, um, it's hard to really know that for sure in the heat of the moment, but... Again, she was crash crashing through a barricade with a bunch of people behind her. Um, it was a pretty violent and escalated situation when you think about it. And he had to make a split second decision based off of not a lot or not enough information, I would even argue. You know, but you can imagine, let's flip the switch and say people were going into the White House, right? Just for the sake of argument, the president's in there. Whoever the president is at the time, doesn't matter, right? But they're going into the White House, crashing through a barricade. They're going to get shot, you know. And it's not so different when you're talking about senators and congressmen. You know, they have protective details. And uh, these people are sworn to protect them. But just what I would ask people to do, instead of looking at the political ramifications um, or biases related to these kinds of subjects, you have to act as if you're a member of the jury in order to reach a just conclusion anyways everybody can have their opinions of course but in order to reach a just conclusion you have to remove those biases and look at the facts as they were for the people that were involved in order to have a qualified opinion about the matter so i'll kind of leave it at that if you guys have anything uh, to add. well well we've, we've got some stuff going on here in chat uh justin uh the media only publishes what they want uh want to and yeah. what fits the current events uh, that they want to have, uh, that they want to push, uh, which is very sad to hear. Yeah. Um, Justin, then, that's been the case uh, for the ever? majority of the media. <laughs> I, I, I think, like, I, ever. I think <laughs> so since, you're, you're not wrong. Since but the 70s, that's what it is. Uh, there's a lot to be said for uh, conspiracy theories and all that fun stuff, um, but there is direct links to government agencies in Hollywood. Uh, that, that are directly responsible for a lot of that stuff. So th there's no, I don't think there's a ignoring the parallels that you see there. You're not wrong at all, brother. Uh, and yeah. then Ryan Clark, uh, didn't she have a large backpack on as well? Uh, seemed like the correct decision to me at the time. I mean, I don't, I don't know that, that a backpack necessarily has anything. I, I think I know where you're going with that. You know, let's say there's like a bomb in it or something or some sort of weapon, right? Uh that's a little loose only because there's no evidence or there wasn't any evidence in the immediate uh, timeline of the shooting to suggest that there was some sort of explosive on her back. And even if there were a weapon in the backpack, she would have had to have made some sort of movement that led the officer to believe, okay, she may be going for a weapon immediately, which is one of the, uh, one of the critical elements of, uh, of a justified shooting is something called imminence, meaning it's happening right now in order ju to justify your actions. So I, I, I know what you mean, but luckily the decision didn't really hinge so much on that backpack. So We get into a real dangerous territory, especially when we start talking about the court system. Um, when we over-focus on right versus legal, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. um, and, and that, that becomes a real big gray area. Um, if we're talking about whether or not we feel it was justified... Morally... Morally. Yeah. And moral right. justification right. and legal justification. Perfect two, example, right? Or two totally different Very things. Very different. Does that mean you walk away in court? Sure. Does that mean I think you're a jerk after the fact? Well, yeah, that might also be true. Absolutely. But you might not be legal in a court of law, right? No. So I think it's important to, to differentiate what you're actually asking in that question, too. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. In, in, a, in a court of law, if you are a member of a jury... That's what I was saying. You have to set aside those biases in order to come to a just conclusion. 
you know, there's been court cases that we've seen even recently where I don't think a just conclusion was reached. Um, it had to have been one based off of the motion because I don't see any other way that the evidence suggested that, uh, I don't know, we'll get into the, end of, uh, the specifics of it, but that the person was guilty. And so, and then there's plenty of other situations where people thought somebody was guilty based off of their preconceived notions about it, but they must not have looked at the evidence because if they had, then they couldn't have reached the conclusion that they did. Or there's even so. uh, really popular uh, cases that we don't have to go into recently where uh, jurors full on after the verdict admitted to being threatened by mob violence. What I was oh, alluding oh, yeah. to. <laughs> for, for, uh, for, you know, for verdicts. So right. I, I don't have to allude. I'll go ahead and say it. But we won't we won't name it by name. But it's 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 a little insane when you when you get out there. It happens. It happens. We it happens have to admit that it happens. Quite a bit. So right and wrong, unfortunately, are very different from legal and illegal. And uh, that makes you think where we're at, right? Which we're going to we're going to continue, I think, in, in later on in our conversations. Um, uh, how much more you got on that rant? Uh, not much. I just want to touch on what Justin said. So Justin said justification is always uh, and always will be a gray area, which is uh, which is true to the extent that you don't need to make the right or perfect decision. You just need to make the correct decision given what you knew at the time. Um, and, and that's all, right? And sometimes that's the wrong decision. As a for instance, you know, you, you take the trope of like the law enforcement interaction during a traffic stop and somebody reaches for something suddenly when told not to and it turns out to be a cell phone but looked very much like a gun, right? Now that's an imperfect decision. However, given some context and a couple of other things, that could be the correct decision in the moment because it's indistinguishable uh, from somebody reaching for a gun. And within so. the guidelines of their training and correct. legality, right. they may right. not have broken any rules, right? right? Right. What do you think, Keith? I would agree with what you guys are saying. Um, it's very hard when it's coming from something that's justifiable to legal. That's mm -hmm. very hard to kind of have that. It's you know, it's, it's an ethical thing. Is it a moral thing? I know we're going to kind of touch on that maybe a little bit later. But it's one of those things like it's hard to make that determination. It's like, all right, I technically, by the book, did the right thing. Yeah. I killed someone. I got it. Technically, not that I got away with it, but, you know. I got the, off. I got off. Yeah. However... Did I morally do the right thing? I, so, and, and that's I think, but but that's also why there's counsel, grief counseling for officers involved in shootings oh, and, and, and military members and everything because it, it, it's a convoluted subject. No matter no matter whether you're a trained uh, professional that does it all the time or, or or put in a situation of life or death and and you have to decide to pull that trigger, you ha you you end up going to to Before counseling to. Um, you gotta see, see that <laughs> we've got, we've got, we got, we got, we got a fan in the chat. I, don't, I didn't mean to interrupt you again, James, but I, I didn't know if Keith noticed the the chat on the screen here. We've got, we've got a Keith's got a fan in the chat. I didn't know if he wanted to read that one out loud for the, for the, the group the, or not. The best part, the best part about uh, live streaming is hey, is the interaction with the chat, and so we have to remember that even when we're in our diatribes and, and we're talking about all of our things, that it's very you guys important. Are very much to to a hundred percent interact with chat when we can and when we can. No. So I want to do a really quick thing in the middle of all of this. Nobody knows who Keith is, and I'd like Keith to really give a good introduction so that we all get an idea of where he's coming from on his point of view. You all know me. You've met Jay. You you know what Chris is and who he's what he stands for. So so let's get a little bit get a little bit from Keith uh, so that you get why he has the opinion that he has. All right. So, my name's Keith, as I said, and I have to say thank you to the lovely, hot, beautiful young lady in the chat that said the new guy is hot. Back to the subject at hand. Um, she was should, could be justified in saying that. Um, all, all opinions considered. All opinions considered. Um, but that is my lovely wife, Amber. Glad she's joining. I'm sure the boys are watching as well. Love you guys. Hi. Um, but my name's Keith. I'm actually... Um, Met these lovely guys a few weeks ago, actually almost a year ago for Jay. Yeah. Uh, some of the other guys not that long ago. I actually have a degree in Christian counseling. Um, I'm actually going to school to get my master's in uh, clinical health counseling. So I kind of give a different perspective from certain things when it comes to 
whether it's moral, ethical, even sometimes a little biblical, um, just kind of with, you know, my background and my degree and kind of things that I like to talk about and discuss. Um, and then coming from where I came from, I was actually born in New York, raised in Pennsylvania, right outside of Philly. Lived in Myrtle Beach for a while. We did, we've been down here in Florida for the last six and a half years. Love Florida, not moving anywhere else. So <laughs> we're here. We're good. <laughs> uh, love the Palm Harbor area. Um, so it's just a pleasure to be here. Glad the guys had me. And uh, let's have some fun. Awesome, brother. Perfect. Anyway, back to where we were. So Justin, I. At the same time? What do you got? All four at the same time? Oh, baby. Oh, my God, that one. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I'm going to let you handle that. <laughs> I, I got, I got, I got nothing to say. <laughs> wow, Love you, amazing. Justin. Love you, Justin. <laughs> All right, for once in a while, once in a while it actually happens. Um, but for, as far as our buddy Keith here, um, it's, a, it's a, it's a great way to kind of transition into what we were talking about before. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, one of the first interactions I had with Keith out, outside of the first time that we met uh, was Keith interacting with uh, the charity group that I ran that I mentioned, I think, in our first episode, uh, Triple Point. Yeah. Uh, one of the first events that we did was a community self-defense event. So basically we set up, uh, we had a space donated in Palm Harbor, and we just did a free to whoever wanted to come uh, two-hour self-defense event. Um Keith was one of the first ones that told me he was going to be there and actually showed up with his son uh, and was kind of just there interacting with everybody, helped demonstrate and stuff. Got, had a really good time uh, interacting with our with our community group and our charity and really started getting to talking after that point and, and realized that he's really a community-minded guy, like he said, involved in the church. Uh, counseling really cares about other people. So um, within my charity group, Triple Point, we had a lot of different things that we were offering um, during COVID. Yeah. Uh, one of which was called uh, Satsang, which is a, uh, uh, right? Satsang. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> can, can you, wait, wait, wait just, just, just so we Satsang, can. Satsang, Satsang. Can you spell it out S-A-T, for the chat? S-A-T-S-A-N-G. And, and you and have to free, Google it. Feel yeah. free to Google it and hit the and hit the pronounce thing. Let the robot, Satsang. Let her say it for you. Um, but you'll, you'll find a couple different definitions. But basically, um, in Sanskrit, I believe, the word just means uh, a gathering of people for truth. Um, so what we were doing in these sessions while we were at first quarantined was via Zoom, um, essentially just kind of getting together and discussing in depth some some philosophical ideas, exercising our brains in like a community kind of way without getting out of our houses, right? Yeah. And then um, as things progressed and, and restrictions kind of let off a little bit, we were able to start having these meetings in person and they kind of s- sprouted out into this almost weird group therapy kind of session. It was really kind of cathartic, but really cool at the same time. So we went over all these really gnarly, like far out topics. Like we talked about stuff like um, death, just literally going around the room, whoever wanted to share, getting everybody's opinion on things like death, um, fear, where it comes from, what it's about, how to, you know, how to conquer it, it's all, all the different aspects surrounding it. And one of the one of the ones that really struck a chord for me personally was the uh, was the discussion on whether or not we believe in destiny or or free will. So that was one that I kind of really wanted to bring to you guys in this little bit of a discussion format, and you guys in the chat, and uh, see what you guys think. Get a couple opinions and maybe kick that around a little bit. Destiny versus free will, the age old discussion. Now. I believe that through choices in your free will will affect the outcome of your individual destinies depending on what choices you make at what forks in the road you're at. Are you willing to take that chance? There's a lot to be looked back on on regret. I think destiny would imply that the path is already set in this in this in this but the question in this mental exercise the path is already set so if we're saying destiny implicit in using that word choice it's an either or thing it, i don't know that it can necessarily exist within both in this mental exercise why could you not have multiple destinies though multiple lives would that be an overarching destiny though 
That, that's, that's what I'm saying, though. Mm-hmm. It, 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 why could you not have multiple different you paths could. that you I don't could know take? <laughs> you could have many know. different. You could have many different destinies depending okay. on which path you take or which group of people you even hang out with. You hang out with a group of people that that, that are negative on on your your return, your net return. You give more than what you receive. Uh, that group of people is is parasitic in your life in a negative way. Whereas if you end up with a group that, that gives more than what they take, that's a, that's a parasitic gain in your life. Um, and, and so destiny can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different ways uh, and can be, a, a, it could be changed uh, in the moment of a decision uh, uh, that may put you uh, on a negative path in the short term, but a, a, a very positive path in the long term. But with that, exactly what you said, how that decision and that road you're going on, but would the path you took to get there be different? Maybe, and maybe. And uh, you, you can definitely, I, I do believe you can have the same destination uh, and have two different paths that, that got you there, but you can also have the same path that got you to two de- different so destinations. Maybe there's like certain markers along your journey that you're going to hit regardless, but the path might vary on how you get there. That's, that's a nice way to think about See, it. I heard one of the best kind of analogies for like your destiny and kind of what it's supposed to be. It's, you know, you're, you have your destiny, kind of what your goal is in life or what, you know, you could be predetermined what your life was going to be. However, there's a set path for it. Every time you kind of alter things, it's kind of like a GPS. It's going to redirect you, and it's kind of like your GPS. It's like, oh, you made a you made a left, like you should have went a right. Yeah. Now, if you'd have went made the right or went straight, the path might have been easier. But now you got to take a back road, take a loop, maybe go somewhere else to get back to that original path. Was it as satisfying? You said easy, so was the path as satisfying? You know, like. Well, the path is, well, you never know because it's, when you're, you know, if you're in your GPS and you're like, you got off the wrong exit because you're supposed to stay on the highway, but also now I got to get off the off ramp because right. I missed my exit. Right. I don't know what I'm going to have to go through <laughs> to get back. <laughs> I don't know if I got to. I got to go through a triple four leaf clover right. with a couple of left hand turns. I don't know if I ran out of gas on the way. <laughs> you know, was I judging my, you know, how much gas I'm going to have left? So that's kind of. I'm eventually going to get back on that highway. Yeah. But how many country roads, back roads, did I have to take? Bad to get there? destinations. I got to get to get there. Am I going to have to push my car part of the way because I ran out of gas? Am I going to possibly lose, have a flat tire? So the, it, you know, instead of only taking an hour, now this trip is taking days or years. But then I see. I would have to ask at that point. I would have to ask at that point, is that something that we think is a bad thing necessarily, right? Because a lot of times what we see in spirituality and a lot of teachings is that that strife, that struggle, is when a lot of our, our muscle, our, 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 our spiritual vitamins and minerals are, are taken in, right? When we, when we transcend those times of, of, of difficulty or those times of in being in the dirt road, right? So if we get the GPS that takes us right to our spot, are we worse off for it? That's a good you, I, I think ask, I, right? I, I think you are, but that that, that that see, I could like throw some things in right now that will like I okay, I got a lot of different stories. I'm a young guy, <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're talking about different paths and different sure, things. Uh, you know, so so you know, this actually leads into a lot of uh, areas that I, I I happen to unfortunately have some experience in. Um, my family started a, a company when I was growing up and, uh, and grew that company into a very large uh, corporate entity um, back in the early 2000s, late 90s uh, for information systems, technologies, telecommunications stuff. So all your cell phones, all your, all your, all your grids of, of telecommunications that, that we take for granted now my my parents helped build in the in the late 90s uh, and early 2000s um and so i got to see a lot of things um they built a company from nothing to 60 million dollars wow. uh they were in, the, in you know in in the inc 500 a couple of years in a row uh by all means should have should have just continued growing and 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 flowering but um 
somebody else decided that it was the end of their journey and 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 figured out how to um, how to who to hurt them in a, in a very personal way mm-hmm. and take all that away and so like what you believe as a kid is your destiny can change really fast because growing up you see all of this growth and you see a lot of business and offices and your your family's employing hundreds of people and thousands of people and uh, you're helping the, the world be better uh, to have somebody strip that away from you because um, they already have theirs and, and they just decided that they don't want you to have yours is a real thing in the world. Uh, sure. yeah. it, 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 and so no matter how much your path may be destined, um, you, any anything can happen and throw a wrench in that in that so even in that nothing example, there, there's no there's no end that, that example is fantastic it, but even in that it could be said that if we take one step further back that what if and i don't again i don't know no. what if all of that was as again that overarching umbrella was supposed to be what happened and supposed to be you carving a, a brand new path you know what i mean so to say that your your perceived destiny wasn't your actual destiny. You know, <laughs> another, another brain opener. I, I didn't want to skip over Justin. I want uh, You want to read that, Chris, real quick? Yeah. Uh, destiny and the path given is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's the road less traveled that ends up being the correct road. Yeah. I mean, uh, That's true. certainly can be. I, I, I have somewhat of a pessimistic um, outlook on, on the destiny subject. And what I mean by that is... If destiny is a thing, you can't prove it, right? No. So, and what I mean by that is if I'm destined to be an astronaut, but I make the willful decision to sit on the couch for most of my life and don't do all the things that that's necessary to become an astronaut, is the universe somehow going to make me still become an astronaut? Or Or if you're Jeff Bezos. Or... (laughs) Uh, what's Elon the name? Musk or? No, no, no. no. Uh, Virgin. 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 Oh, yeah. Richard. Um, Branson. Branson. Branson, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've all made willful decisions to be where they are. Right? <laughs> so, uh, but the idea is then if I sit on the couch and I don't become an astronaut, then maybe my destiny was sit on the couch. I don't know. Uh, it, so you then, don't know. So then the question we could actually titrate down to is potential real? Yes. So if potential is real, could destiny be real in the same space. Keith, what do you think? That's a good one. <laughs> because when you look at the two, potential, it's almost like, you know, kind of like, almost like well, an atom that, you know, it's sitting there. It's a part of physics, it's potential of energy. It. Right, yes. so potentially, it could be something, it could be nothing. It's just the same with your destiny. It kind of could be, all right, you might have been, and for you, you know, your family, that was their destiny was to have this, you know, huge company, make all this money. But who's to say that was your destiny? Exactly. So that was your parents' destiny. But who's to say that was your destiny? Now, you saw it as, hey, you know, oh, I, I was I'm, a young teenager. I was right. a kid growing up. I, yeah, I, like, this is going to be great for me. Oh, yeah, mom, dad, thanks a lot. And they're like, um, you know. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> now, things happen to take away. But who's to say that that was your destiny? So if the atom was sitting there, you're the atom, the atom sitting there. But what actually put things in motion and kind of caused the effects for you? Now, who's to say, and I, Amber put in the chat, detours are usually a pain in the butt. So the detours that you faced made you who you are today. Absolutely. So if you didn't face those detours, who's to say that you'd be better off than you are now? There's no guarantee. Right. There's no. And that and that's where the whole clandestine, you know, predetermined uh, destinations, destiny, uh, you know, d- choosing what path you, you're you on. Uh, I, I do believe at any moment in time, you can change your path if you are strong enough to to eat the shit that is involved in, in changing your path. There is a um, very, very uh, commonly quoted martial artist, or I'm sorry, martial arts instructor. He doesn't actively compete by the name of uh, John Donaher. And he believes vehemently that within five years, if you give him five years, doesn't matter what it is, you can trans- completely transform your life 
within that realm, whether it's being a professional driver or a jiu-jitsu practitioner or a, a mechanic or a pianist, whatever it is, five years of intense training and you can become a anything transformed expert level practitioner and whatever it is. Yeah. So I fully have to agree that the possibility is there, but again, it layers back over if that were the thing, right? Yeah. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use Jeremy's uh, Jeremy's getting, uh, Jeremy's quote here. Let's get, let's if if a knight's tale let's taught me anything, it's that a man can change his stars. I want to use that as a perfect example. It's a great movie, Heath Ledger. Let's use that prime example, right? <laughs> Heath freaking Ledger, beautiful baby. example. I'm a huge Batman fan, Batman nerd. Got a tattoo. Not a big deal, right? If two, three, four decisions in his life were made differently would he still be the same guy? Would he still be Heath Ledger, the actor, right? Would those movies still be made? Would you be quoting... All of these movies. A Knight's Tale right now in this conversation if he sneezed when he should have farted one day? Would it be as good? <laughs> would a Knight's Tale have been as good without Heath Ledger? Butterfly effect, that? man. <laughs> Who knows, Actors, right? You know. That's the wonky part. Everything right. starts going like this when you really I, start I looking you, at it. I, I can tell you my wife 100% <laughs> believes that, that the Fast and Furious would not have been what it was without Paul Walker. Well, sure. I mean, but they still made like eighteen more after right, Paul yeah. Walker. The, but, but I'm pretty sure they CGI'd him. All in, him all like in one Paul of Walker's movies. name, <laughs> like they brought him in through CGI. Like and had his brother play his part. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll back a little. I don't want to miss you guys. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Bring bring. Let's get some definitely some, some chat. Uh, in, in Justin, combo. destiny and the path given is a slippery slope. Sometimes it is the road less traveled that ends up being the correct road. I think you may have read that one. Yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely right. That and, and we kind of touched on it before. Um, and, and I'll just speak briefly. I fully believe that all those things that we view as mistakes, um, once once we see them in the rearview mirror, once hindsight kicks in, we often find that those are the things that uh, really got the right angle on the chisel to refine us just the right way yeah. to get where exactly where we need to be. Um, if you guys want to continue on, go ahead. Now, I can tell you kind of personally for me some things that kind of got me off the path or what my path was supposed to be and kind of back to where I am now. Now it's taken 25 years, but it was that journey. And now, did I learn lessons through the journey? Absolutely. Was I kind of going against the so-and-so grain or what I thought I should be doing? Because I was kind of greedy and wanted these other things? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Was the journey very tough? Have I lost almost everything I've had twice and had to start from scratch because I was like, oh, yeah. So, oh, I get it. So it's like, you know, but now I'm here and those things kind of <laughs> taught me lessons. I can pass these lessons on to, like, I tell my kids. I'm like, listen, I'm like, you know. Do things a certain way. It's like, you know, like we tell you certain things to do, but it's <laughs> do like, Do as I hey. say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm like, no, but I'm like, hey, don't do what daddy did. I'm like, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm 47 years old, and I'm like, I'm going back to school to get my master's degree. I'm like, I should have got it 27 <laughs> years ago. I'm like, I work full time. I'm in school full time, and I'm like, and I'm a full time dad, full time husband, you know, and I'm like, how you're dividing all that time up when you know when I was been young and had that time to do it and nothing else. I'm like, hey, take that time. I, I wish I had done more. Yeah. yeah, it's like the old guy in the Ferrari, right? Yeah, yeah. The time imbalance. Like by the time I can get the sports Ferrari. car, I can't really drive it without crashing it into a public. But the insurance is cheaper. <laughs> but the insurance, the insurance is way cheaper. Way cheaper. <laughs> way cheaper. Um, Chris, you want to go back up to that destiny comment from Justin and read that? That's a good one too. Uh, At yeah, the top. Uh, destiny can al uh, be altered, but goals are always concrete. You always wonder about your destiny, but if you set goals, you're already uh, ahead and working towards that goal. So I think <clears throat> it sounds like Justin's more in the camp of uh, free will than destiny, at least in insofar as taking ownership uh, for what your path is and making you know making your own path. Um, you know, in, in my own life, there's been times where things have happened, and it, like when you reflect on it, you're like, son of a bitch. Like, that didn't happen by mistake, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I just feel like some of that stuff is just kind of a, a, a subtle nudge in the right direction. Um, so, in a, in a certain way, I can't help but feel like there's a force kind of moving things in the background and kind of pulling out little blocks here and there. But most of it uh, is on you and, and, and what you do. So... I don't know, maybe 90% free will, 10% destiny? 
I, so, I, you know? I, I would be more inclined to, to agree with that. I think it's more of a mix, maybe, than, than the cut and dry that the question implies. And, and like you said, I, and, and again, I'm going to slip into the woo-woo stuff, but it's something I, I, fairly, I preach fairly heavily with what we do at Ethereal, and even with our martial arts training, because it applies in a, in a real thick layer to life. Um, when we align ourselves um, with, with growth and, and love and abundance in a non-selfish way, meaning like in a, in a virtuous way, in a, I don't mean self-righteous when I say it, but in a righteous way, not holier than thou righteous, but in a way that is implicit of, I want good for you because it's the right thing to do, not because it benefits me. More often than not, those those phantom puzzle pieces from whoever's pulling yeah. those strings in the background that we don't necessarily know how to acknowledge or feel comfortable acknowledging by name, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> those puzzle pieces start getting recognized a little bit more, and we start seeing how intricate they are, and they just start plopping right into place. Yeah. Girl these guys, the these guys are, these guys are freaking trying to throw me under the bus right now. So they, they <laughs> just, I'm just they gonna let them. Be. I'm gonna let them keep going. Anyway. Back to what you guys were talking about before they started talking about Zach. Nothing is that happened Zach. while I may have had one or two many brews, you know. Zach, <laughs> Zach, I'm, I'm gonna, now. I'm gonna steamroll that, Zach. I'm seeing your comment here, man. Joking or not, brother, <laughs> that self programming is gonna get you in trouble. You, nothing's ruined your goals, man. The, everybody's, yeah. everybody's hit roadblocks. You gotta. This is a really, really, really good time. To, to take inventory mentally, physically, your family, everything, take gra find gratitude in everything that's that's weathered the storm this far and, and really fortify your foundation, man, because there's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. And obviously it's, it's tough to ignore. But um, once you get out to the other side of this, and there's obviously going to be another side. There's always another side. All this stuff ebbs and flows like it always has and always will. Uh, you will be so much more fortified and reinforced and badass spiritually, mentally, emotionally for it, that just just keep pressing forward, brother. You made it this far. You're doing great, man. And I love the one comment in there because it's from my son, my 14-year-old. Oh, so wow. I love it. So you said, your destiny is always there, but you just have to choose to achieve it and or receive it. So Beautiful. that's for a fourteen-year-old. So. That, that's for a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> Good job. I'm like, <laughs> Good job. Dad. Good job, Dad. Great job, that's Dad. That's what's up. So it's one of those things where it's thank there. you, Anthony. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Keep yeah. repping out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those things too, where it's like you see that you know it's out there, but you have to want to, and it's not going to be easy. If, if if goals were easy, you know, outside of Jay here, you know, all of us would have six packs. You know, <laughs> that was so easy. Yeah. That shit was so, so easy. easy. You know, all of us would have six packs. We'd all be multi billionaires, yeah. living in great house. You know, definitely. definitely. Just sitting all over the world. Yeah. Chris is a firearms proficient guy and instructor, right? Right. He teaches people how to correct micro mistakes on the reg. I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Okay. These are things that take a lot of time to refine these skills in. You know how many times I've said to people, I mean, at nauseum, you know how many times I've said to people, if it was easy, everyone would be a black belt? Yep. Not only that, <laughs> if there was money in it, everyone would do. be a black yeah. belt? <laughs> it's, but Some it's, martial arts are like that. But that I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> I can buy a box of black belts right now yeah. on Amazon. <laughs> but the thing is, when you earn it, Right? Yeah. Just like everything else, the something. process, right? The road to get there, kind of circling back to what we were talking about, the process is what makes it, right? I I, going and buying one off the internet doesn't mean jack crap, but all the blood, sweat, and tears getting to that point is what actually makes it have value. The belt is meaningless. Jiu Jitsu is, sorry, Jiu Jitsu yeah. is one of those like martial arts that I, when you have a black belt there, nobody questions that shit. They're like, yeah, that you are. Nowadays, hug, Zach. there's an asterisk I'll put on there. Nowadays, there's a, there's a qualifying question of who'd you get yeah, it from. For sure. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, 100%, I would agree on that. It's all, you know, it's also about, you know, people always, like, we see athletes. Like, you know, you got, you're an athlete. You, you know, you, you know, you're you know efficient at, you know, firearm and everything. Yep. But we only see the finished product. Absolutely. So when we see you yeah. on the mat in the competition, we see you in a competition or you're doing your, you know, we see the finished product. And people are like, oh, I, I can go out and do that. 
Easy. I can grapple. Bro, I can, I can play I my can totally arm. catch that pass from Tom Brady. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> but what an idiot. It. He dropped it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, because we make it look easy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But you don't see all the years and yeah. years the 10, and hours of training that work movement. that yeah. had to go into it. All the broken bones, broken noses, you know, accidentally, possibly, you know, misfiring your firearm or something. You don't see all that. All you That's see is the proficiently, the great skill got, you have. I got, I got knocked <laughs> out in a 11 seconds in Jacksonville with nobody cornering me. Is that time. what happened to your teeth? It was awful. <laughs> that, Damn, that's the other one, too. He's just son of a bitch. What is in that fucking <laughs> crowd? Wow. Jesus Christ, man. Welcome to the gaming world. That's cool. <laughs> that's all right, baby. We'll take that. Anyway, mental notes, mental back notes. Back to chat. <laughs> that's just a little check mark. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when I come in with fucking daggers next week and people start crying and leaving puddles of piss, you know, it's all good. Uh, Zach, I've learned a lot of lessons. I went from making 70K a year to having nothing, losing my place. Oof, and living in my car, having my car repoed. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah no, dude, setbacks, everything. man. That's. Listen, bro. You're you're here still. You gotta keep. It, you gotta stay in the fight, man. You gotta stay in the fight. Is that true? That are those actors? That... Yes, that's totally true. <laughs> <laughs> Pull his profile. Right? <laughs> uh, yes, I definitely did that. <laughs> Justin, oh man, don't tell your wife off tonight. You're good. Keep keep the peace, bro. Have a good time with it. Girl, dad's running off. He's getting a little. He's getting a little cranky with his uh, with his anger. I, I like that uh, quote from your son, though. That actually gave me a different perspective. Um, if you're uh, <laughs> choose to achieve it and or receive it, right. So hypothetically, if there were a greater power, right, that they might have an idea for you. Here's the path that I think you can achieve based off of the potential I know I've given you. Yet, your choices have led me to believe that you're not ready for it. So here's some fucking pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to put you through the crucible, right? And then we'll see how it turns out on the other end. And see if you're ready to receive it. Yeah. I've, uh, I've Gotta personally kind of had things like that happen to me where I was like, okay, I, I've achieved all this, but... Did I really appreciate the things I mm -hmm. had, and did I put the in the right perspective in the things I achieved? No. So I'm like, oh, I got these nice cars, I got a bunch of jewelry, I got this, I got that, making good money. But you know, am I doing the right things with this? Did I appreciate it? And Have you made a difference in the world? I, I think that's like when it comes down to it, our legacies are like you know. Legacy could be considered anything from having a bunch of kids or whatever and leaving that behind you to actually doing something that bettered society. All the, and, and, and anything in between there can be considered, can be considered leaving a legacy. You mean, what you mean legacy? Having, having a streaming channel with tens of viewers? <laughs> <laughs> that kind of legacy? Tens of yes. Okay. Just and wanted to clarify. Thousands, Continue. thousands someday. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, everybody's legacy oh, we're cutting started deep. somewhere. I got to cut deep back. Come on. Bitch. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm going hey, to put this. Nasty I'm gonna, one by the way, the by the way, I'm going to kick you. I, I, You're going to what? When, when, kick, when, kick when, when we kick have a hundred viewers, I get to kick you right in the nuts on camera. I would let you. Hundred percent on camera. When we have a hundred yes. viewers, yes, hundred viewers. You're right here right first. I'm agreeing. Hundred viewers, <laughs> you can kick me in us. No problem. Full That's send. how you get the viewers. I mean, full <laughs> send on on the live. We can get a hundred viewers. You guys can viewers. count it down in the mother Evan chat. I get to kick Jay in the nuts. Count it down. <laughs> no cup. No cup. <laughs> Nope. You guys ever see Hot Shots? Uh, I think it's part new. And yeah. it's like, yeah. you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Hot Shots part right? two. When he gets yes. hit, yeah. <laughs> his balls come up in his mouth. <laughs> it's honestly one of my favorite movies. Where's the chat? If you haven't seen Hot Shots Part 2, we're all above 30 because that's the movie that we think of. Right? <laughs> With the nut shot? Hot Shots. Absolutely. Anyway. Oh, Tracy uh, Dean, no, please. Chat. Tracy, it's okay. It'll be all right. I lost chat somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but back 
to what you said about legacy. <laughs> and everyone can leave a different type of legacy and what they think their 100%. legacy is or what, you know. Yeah. You said, do you feel that you've done good in the world? You right. Kind of question. So for me, I've always said, I have two sons. So I've always said I want to bring up God-fearing men that respect women that are going to be, you know, good leaders and just morally, ethically sound gentlemen. Like that was my gentlemen, though. Like that's right. the, I think I think that's the key term, so, of gentlemen. So that's what I've always tried to exhibit to them. Like, how do you treat women? How do you treat your mother? How do you treat people? How do you do you you know are you respectful? You, now, doesn't mean that you have to totally respect everybody just because of how, who they are, how they're, but act respectful. Yeah. So I might not respect the person, no. but I can act respectful Absolutely. for them. So, and where, where do you think those values were instilled in you from? Oh, from my parents. So From, from your father. Of and, course. Right. So I was something that, you know, and I mother saw. And, right, and yeah. family, the, like the family unit. Yes. I mean, my dad was a Pentecostal pastor, so I really saw a lot. You know, I was in my, the church and that kind of stuff, and, you know, so that's how I grew up. My great uncle was a Monsignor in the Catholic Church. Okay. So, for me, I saw, you know, that kind of, you know, growing up in the church and that kind of stuff. So, I saw all that side of things, but I also saw, you know, just the opposite, too. I saw people that weren't respectful, even though they were in the church. I saw people that weren't respectful, that didn't, you know, they took for granted some of the gifts and things that they had. So there's the both sides of that. So yeah, and I think that's the best legacy you can leave is, in, in my opinion, it, affecting change in, in people in, in the next generation, man, and and putting out virtuous, hardworking people to, to hopefully carry that torch on and do it for the generation after them, you know? Yeah. And one of the great things I like about the stuff you do with Triple Point, it's just, it's the stuff that you just do. And it's not like you're like, you know, it's like, oh, well, we need self-defense or we need to help the homeless or we need to, it's just like stuff oh, that Toys people, for, for toys for kids, yeah. you know, Everything. we did like, here absolutely. on the channel, yeah. we did we did a, a big Christmas toy drive for the kids. That was know? the thing we we really af- assigned ourselves <coughs> really, really to to oh. being a facilitator and not trying to take credit or accolades. And it's kind of like what we talked about before with aligning yourself with doing right for the sake of being of doing right, not for being right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not for wanting to be better or sanctimonious or holier than thou, but doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do, not for any other reason. And it's having that integrity, which is, you know, what they say is doing the right thing when no one else is watching. So no one, you didn't have to do these things. No, You know, you were like, this is the right thing to do. Whether I'm going to, whether people are going to buy into it or not, this is the right thing to do. I'm going to start and this with it. my friends. <laughs> and you're doing it. And you're right. making a difference. And guess what? You start, you have a legacy. Like you said, what's your legacy going to be? He now has a different legacy. Why do you have that legacy now? Just because you, as one person, and then you got a group of your friends together. You changed your destiny you want by changing st- your path, by making a different decision. That, and and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this much on that, is that when you make that decision, three quarters of the people in your life are going to think you're effing crazy when you make that decision. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be hard because... The support system is going to be small at the beginning. It it, it it goes the same way for streamers, and and I you know this is just because I've been streaming for about a year now, and uh, this is from content creators that have been streaming for ten years. It doesn't matter if they've been streaming for ten years, five years, two years. Um, as they start to build their communities, um, it becomes harder and harder to separate everything. It it, it all becomes one within within the world of content creation and you forget where your paths can change you, you you can easily change a path by changing a game by changing the content that you create by creating different content content creation is not limited to one thing and, and a lot of people get stuck in that um that 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 rabbit hole 
That, that it's a really you, good metaphor for life, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, right? It, 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 but <laughs> people get caught in that mind matrix too, right? They, they, in, in any job, career, anything, Absolutely. you get caught in the in the matrix. You get caught in the mind thought, or in the in the the breaking it down, and and all you're comfortable. You're getting a paycheck, but is that what you were really supposed to do? Yeah. And, and, and are you with? willing to take that leap of faith that could cost you everything? But are you willing to be KF motherfucking C and broke at 65 <laughs> and throw some seasoning on some chicken and become a billionaire? All right. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson, crackhead, yeah. actor at 45. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you never know. Also went back to kind of what you said when you were like, you know, when you start something like that, 75% of people are going to think you're crazy. Absolutely. That So if you start off with, let's just say your circle is 20 people. Now you're down to... but. Was that 20 people truly people that you could depend on? Were they positive influences in your life? Were they the ones that were like, oh, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you for a good time. But all of a sudden <laughs> Not now, for a long time. Right. So they're <laughs> in your sad. life for a season. Yeah, yeah. So now your season has changed. And now you have a core five people that, guess what, are going to support you, be a positive influence on you, be there to hold you up, be there when you're down be there to totally support you and your belief. So now you have that five. Before you had 20, it looked good, but did you really have 20? No. No, right. you, you had an entourage. You had an entourage. Mm-hmm. Now, you got, now you got Hangers five on. people you can depend on yep. that are going to stand there and support you and pick you up and be there for you. So just because you were like, oh, I'm doing something different, and everyone else is like, oh, you're crazy. But that five, that was the five you always needed. Yep. And that was the only five you ever needed, and you needed to, and and, and it's like the devil pulls you away. Mm. It it tries to pull you away from that five and and bring you into the the other 15. Like, it it, it, it consciously thinks about what could be good for you in your life, and it tries to pull you towards what could be bad in your life because it's more fun or more interesting um, where we're going the other direction that's a little bit more boring and, and more regimented, maybe actually better in the long run. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a duality of life. For oh, sure. I like that word. Duality? Yeah. It's a beautiful word. <laughs> I'm going back up real there's quick. Some interesting uh, shit there's in a chat. lot of stuff going on in chat. <laughs> there's a lot. So I'm going to run back up. Catch up in uh, chat. Mike, uh, Papa, Papa, Girl Dad, Papa, Pop, 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 Pop. Uh, best is to love yourself. Listen, I could not echo and emphasize that more. When we're talking about legacy, when we're talking about reaching people, we're talking about the best way to affect change going forward, right? Legacy is what lives on beyond me, ideally, right? Whether it's energy or tangible. Best way to do that is within the next generation. And if I have no love at my core, how am I I gonna extend that out to translate my feelings and my potential my love energy into that next generation, right? So you're 100% correct. I fully believe that it starts with building up the core self first. That way we're in the best possible position to hopefully reach as many people as possible and leave that lasting legacy. Somebody grab the next one. But just to piggyback on that, sure. the next one, how many people do you meet and hear and see that they're so, and you know, you have, you know, we're, we're all talking about social media, so we're looking at all these Instagram models and all that kind of stuff. They're so, they don't like themselves. They just need Oh, they that, hate themselves. They need that from somebody else. They're like, oh, if, if I don't get a thousand likes when I post this picture in five See, minutes, they, I'm, they it's, they a literal, it's a literal drug addiction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Click, click, click. Dopamine, they, dopamine, they, they, dopamine. Uh, but It's they, a literal uh, drug addiction. But uh, they do, uh, what, what, dopamine. Serotonin. So serotonin. Serotonin. Yeah. Yeah. serotonin. But the dopamine, dopamine fix is literally the, 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 Sorry, the digital right. Right. It's gross. Yeah. But they don't love themselves. They need somebody else to tell them either you're pretty, you're this, you're to that. To assign them value. Right. Yes. So, yeah, so go, go, for, go for it to the next one. Can you scroll up? Because we met. There's, yeah. There's, no, I get I get scroll up. So yeah. Uh, uh, Amber would be the next one, or maybe God's path. Yeah. It, it, uh, well, I, Zach was saying he, he he was having some trouble in his life, um, and Amber said something interesting. She said, or maybe uh, God's path for you is always perfect, but when you veer off of God's path, scroll up a little bit. Uh, up down. Sorry. Oh, this yeah. way. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. There. Uh, but good. when you put yourself <laughs> in God's place and start doing your own thing then that is when you hit rock bottom and life gets super hard. I, 
my only problem with that is I, I think that at times without the right guidance or maybe even faith is the right uh, word, people can fall into this idea that, well, it's all in God's hands, right? And then they can release themselves or at least trick themselves into thinking that they don't bear any responsibility for the outcome. And I fear, and I don't know Zach at all, but I fear that maybe sometimes uh, people do that and then that's where they fall off the wagon and then they end up blaming God for it, right? And then say, well, me and God had a falling out because this bad thing happened to me or whatever. But it, that could just be because, again, back to what your son was saying, your son's quote, you weren't uh, ready to achieve it or receive it. Right, and again, I don't mean to assign blame because I don't know Zach from anybody. No, I'm just kind of inferring from what we're reading yeah, yeah. here, and so I just I, I like the idea of faith and like saying like, hey, I believe in this, and that allows me a certain relief knowing that despite the bad things, I'm headed in the right direction because I know I'm doing the right things. Yeah. Versus, it's all in God's hand. I don't have any responsibility. You know. What I'm and saying? to that person, whether it's named Zach, their name Zach or not, I would ask. What does your circle look like? What do those five friends around you look like, yeah. first and foremost? And secondly, I would I would ask to hear what your internal dialogue sounds like. And I guarantee you, in, in, in addressing both of those two things, we could probably find a big part of what's going on with you. You know what I mean? And, and to what Amber said, I fully agree with that to the point that I think if you, I, I'm not a, you know, I, I, I don't, believe in classical theology a whole whole lot I believe in higher power and I'm, I'm fairly versed um, in some of you know the the versions of modern religions we'll say mm -hmm. uh, as a whole but I can tell you this that God always tests you know his most his most loyal so to say that the path is always easiest that's laid out I don't know that that's always true because if you believe in the Bible then it, it, it tells you flat out that God's most loyal followers and and and, Do and, not and have chosen, the they get tested. Yeah. What's well, easy to they say get you tested. have faith, but what, if you, if you, you were tested. God, wouldn't you test them? So let's, let's see what uh, you know. Uh, you know. Just real quick, uh, you definitely need to jump in on yeah, this. Yeah, so, yeah. This, yeah. Is your, this is your real. <laughs> this, this is, this is much more. So you talked about a bunch of things. I know sure. we're, we're, we're close to the top of the hour. So Absolutely, I'll, jump in, please. We are. And this, and this is going to burn my wife because I finally, you know, it's a subject that... Oh, I, I can't wait for this. Oh, this is great. So, ding, 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 ding. my favorite book of the Bible is Job. Okay. Job is my favorite book of the Bible. Um, it's She's always like, he just sounds like he's whining all the time. <laughs> she's like, why is this man constantly whining? But Job had everything. I mean, everything. And then Satan, God let Satan... Um, strip everything away from them. So God and Satan, they came together, you know, for the Bible, they came together and said, hey, you can take anything. Who's the one? He's like, oh, my servant Job. Yeah. He's like, touch. He's like, you can take anything from him, just his soul's mind. Take anything you want from his soul's mind. So Job lost everything, family, um, all of his kids, all of his livestock, all of his money, houses, cattle, everything. everything. And, uh, and his wife comes to him and says, curse your God and die. He's like, no. But his yet friends I'm still are coming faithful. to him. His friends are coming to him. You know, they sat with him, prayed with him in silence for days. And then finally, he's talking to them, and he's like, "They're like, I don't know." He's like, "I don't know." He's like, "But I refuse to turn my back on God." And so, at the end of Job, you know, God honors Job because of everything he did and gives him double what he had. Mm. Why? Because he had faith. No. He changed his legacy yeah. and his destiny. Right. And now, when you look back at it, all the suffering and everything he went through was for a reason. It, it was. Like I think, so, the, so I think, it, all right. I, we're gonna, we got two minutes left. We got, we gotta, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, run, quote, we're gonna run we're gonna run real quick too, long. Let me let me get to a quote, and then I'm gonna go into something real quick with the whole faith and religion thing real quick for one second but uh from michael trump, Mike uh, trump what up, this baby? is from an author i admire roger ringer sure theory there's only one way to be sure that your objective destiny will be given the best shot possible 
Take matters into your own hands and don't expect any help from anyone. When you proceed in this manner, you're in control. But it, it, let me interject here, control is, is an illusion. Uh, and I'm going to continue now. When you count on outside help, you're out of control and looking for salvation. This instinctive thing to do is listen to others. The right thing is to take control. The key, is, uh, the key words are expect and count on. Our destiny is in our hands. If you want something bad enough, you'll get it within reason. Uh, you know, I think we're all pretty good judges of our potentiality, and so within, to his point, within reason, as long as you have a pretty good subjective idea of what your potential is, you can say, "Hey, I can achieve X Y Z goal." But you know, if I'm uh, four foot three, I'm probably not going to be a pro NBA player, right? You're definitely so. not going to be able to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, to that, I'll I'll counter to that, Muggsy Bugs, dude. It, not four foot three, three but four. he yeah. heard the same the five same, foot two, the same yeah. thing. But that's yeah, that goes to exactly a, what you're saying. But though, he right? had a five foot up, like. Yeah, but it goes. It, it goes. I mean, to, this two. little dude could jump. It does go <laughs> to your same point, though, right? And I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you, you're good. But you're good. How many? Uh, chat, sound off. How many of you have been told by somebody you can't do something or you shouldn't do something and did it anyway? Right? Whether it was a parent a or an advisor. Like, yeah. The fu yeah. motivation, yeah. right? Yeah. So who's to say what's what? Were you supposed to do that all along? Man, who knows? Maybe that person telling you to go screw off was the motivation that you needed to accomplish that goal you were supposed to accomplish the whole time. All right, chat. Um, I think that uh, we have come to a head. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. With, Everybody's with popping off. I like it. We're, I like it. We're, 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 we've, we've had a great evening with everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Um, by the way, everybody, we're looking at the top camera right now, just so you know. Um, <laughs> When this, when the, hey, when, hey. when the green light, just, just, I, you oh, know, I don't mind. I'm talking to everybody. So when you see okay. the green light on the big fat camera, that means that it's off. And when you see the red light on the big fat camera, that means that it's on. And that's how you know what camera to look at. I'm so a professional. Green so light. I'm glad you're at, talking to these two. Hey, that would have been great to know. And I, I, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much. <laughs> I've been staring at the desk for the last. You've been, you've been, you've been staring at me anyway. So <laughs> you know. great to know. you're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate everybody joining in, and uh, it's been a great evening. We will see you guys next Wednesday uh, and continue more of the conversations. We're going to have something new to talk about uh, and continue. Oh, sounds like Sierra just woke up. Boss We're going to have something. Here. Boss Lady is here. we got to get out of here. But something. we'll have some new things to talk about, some more things going on. Hopefully everybody has a wonderful evening, and we will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>